by whatever means we continue to work on. This community should not be tarnished in your time. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. So now we'll have a couple of speeches, short speeches by uh, Atwa. So we'll start with Safir Emmasad. Uh, or Ramis Mohar Sahib.
He encouraged the Muslims of the subcontinent to restrain from non-cooperation movement and led them into the engagement with British authorities to earn the due rights for Indian Muslims. He offered strong resistance to the violent movement of Trithi, i.e. to revert Muslim Hinduism of Arya Samaj. This resistance eventually forced Arya Samaj to end the movement in 1923. He reigned over promised Messiah's Jamaat for over half a century and passed away on 7th November 1965. This was an astonishing record in so many fields of human endeavor, all related to the supremacy of Islam in the annals of the Renaissance of Islam. Hazrat Muslim stands out as a great and shining figure. He was indeed the perfect reflector of Allah's light. <coughs>
Is I got is that so big that must have a here? start off with a question for children under 10 years old. Actually, uh, Sapir and Asap just covered the answer to this question. So basically, uh, raise your hand if you think we celebrate the birthday of Hazrat Muslim Maud on Muslim Maud Day for children under 10 years old.
1944, presenting the background of the prophecy of the Muslim mother, the Talangu, said that 58 years ago, in 1886, a concert of God came to this holy place to present himself in front of God. He engaged in earnest solitary prayers that God bestowed upon the son after these 40 days of prayers. The sign was, Allah said, that I will make your name reach the borders of the earth but in order to fulfill this promise with even greater splendor I shall bestow upon you a son who would be blessed with some special attributes and qualities. He would cause Islam to be spread to all parts of the earth and would make the people understand the fine points of divine knowledge. He would be a manifestation of God's mercy and grace. God would grant him he would live a long life until he would attain fame the world over. So some people objected that how come the birth of a son is a divine sign? Many people can have sons. So answering this objection the of uh, the people that Prophet Muhammad wrote in his announcement of March 22nd, 1886, that this is not just a prophecy, but in fact it is a very heavenly sign from the gracious God. The Prophet Muhammad said, what I have said is that God, by accepting my prayers, has promised to send forth into the world such a blessed soul whose manifest and subtle blessings shall spread throughout the earth. So this was a summary of the revelation. And it is not within the power of a man to foretell the birth of a son's years in advance. Not only that, but and then for that boy to live a long life and service on tremendously. So the birth of the son was timely as the sign was given as a mark of truthfulness, of the truthfulness of the Prophet in response to his opponent's demand for a son. So basically, the birth of the Prophet had to be around that time period. And the Hazrat Muslim Mother of Allah Anhu had divine dreams to inform him that he was a promised, promised son. And Hazrat Muslim Mother saw in his dreams that the earth was shrinking under his feet, meaning that he will make quick progress. He was visiting far men, meaning he will spread the message of Islam and that he was given the knowledge of the Quran. And then, um, dreams he was told that he was the messianic soul and the spirit of truth. So as a Muslim who did not see his need to declare that he was from the promised son to leave he was inspired by God. In nineteen forty four when Hazrat Muslim made a claim and he made a claim of not being the not being Muslim. So he said, as Muslim said, the promised Khalifa has a status in between a prophet and a Khalifa, as the promised Khalifa is also commissioned by God. And he said, I am not one raised or appointed by God as in the prophet of God, but my voice is the voice of God, because God Almighty had given such tidings to the promised Messiah. So, and then he said that the person thinks that I am guilty of fabrication, lying or falsehood in this matter, this matter, he should come and engage in Mubahila prayer to the me. And Allah the Exalted would deliver his verdict by heavenly signs as to who is a liar and who is truthful. So these are some of the fulfilled signs about regarding the prophecy of uh, the Hazrat Muslim One is that he would be fulfilled with the knowledge of the manifest, he would be filled with the which is a spiritual, or subtle, or hidden knowledge. He will convert three into four. His descent would be the cause of the manifestation of the glory of God. He shall grow faster and faster, and he shall be the cause of the release of those enslaved. One interesting fact is that there are 52 or 58 signs that can be found in the prophecy regarding the Muslim Muslim and his Khilafat was also 52 years of completion. So there are many parts of the prophecy which became fulfilled in the person of the Muslim mother of the and indeed were fulfilled many times at, at, and at different places. So these are the signs of the truth, the truth of the Prophet Messiah and enhanced the honor and esteem of the Holy Prophet.
खूबसूरत पाक लड़का तुम्हारा मेहमान आता है उसका नाम अमानविल और बशीर भी है उसको मुकदस रूह दी गई है और वो रजिस से पाक है और वो नूर अल्लाह है और वो नूर अल्लाह है मुबारक वो जो आसमान से आता है उसके साथ फजल है जो उसके आने के साथ आएगा वो साहब शिकवा और और अजमत और दौलत होगा वो दुनिया में आएगा और अपने मसीही नफ्स और रूल हक की बरकत से बहुतों को बीमारियों से साफ करेगा वो कलमत अल्लाह है क्योंकि खुदा की रहमत और ने उसे कलमा तमजीद से भेजा है वो सब सही नफहीम होगा और दिल का हलीम और अबू में जहरी और बात से पुर किया जाएगा और टीम को चार करने वाला होगा दो शंबा है मुबारक दो शंबा फरजंद और दिलबंद ग्रामी अर्जमन मजहर अव्वल वल आखिर मजहर हक व गला कान अल्लाह नजला मिनसमा जिसका नजूल बहुत मुबारक और दिला इलाही के लोह का मौजूद होगा नूर आता है नूर जिसको खुदा ने अपने रजामंदी की आदत से मनसूख किया हम उसमें अपनी रूह डालेंगे और खुदा का साया उसके सर पर होगा वो जल्द जल्द बढ़ेगा और असीरों की रस्तकारी का मुजब होगा और जमीन के किनारों तक शोहरत पाएगा और कौमें इससे बरकत पाएगी तब वो अपने नफ्स के नुकता आसमान की तरफ उठाया जाएगा वकाना आमर मुखजयान मुखजिया मुखजिया मुंकर और हक के मुखालिफ हो अगर तुम मेरे बंदे की नस्बत शक में हो अगर तुम्हें इस फजल एहसान से कुछ इनकार है जो हमने अपने बंदे पर किया तो इस निशान रहमत की मानन तुम भी अपनी नस्बत कोई सच्चा निशान पेश करो अगर तुम सच्चे हो और अगर तुम पेश ना कर सको तो उस आग से डरो जो नाफरमानों और झूठों और हाथ से बढ़ने वालों के लिए तैयार है इश्तहार बीस फरवरी अठारह सौ छियासी मजमु इश्तहार सफा एक सौ तीन मतबूल on February between 1886 and the Prophet Messiah, peace be upon him, says, God, the mercy of the noble, the high, the exalted, who has power to do all that he wills, has thus saved to make the following revelation. I confirm upon thee, a sign of my mercy, according to the supplication. I have heard the interstic and I have honored the I have honored thy prayers with the acceptance through my mercy. And I have blessed this without journey. A sign of power, mercy, nearness to me is about safe on thee. A sign of grace magnificent is awarded to thee. But thou art granted the key to success and victory. Peace be upon thee, O victorious one. Thus as God speaks of that those who desire light may be rescued from the grip of death, and those who are buried in their graves may, in, may emerge their from so that they of, of Islam and the dignity of God's word may become manifestations upon people, and so that the truth may arrive with all of its blessings, and falsehoods may be departed from, may, de may be departed with all its ills, and so that people may understand that I am the Lord of power. I do whatever I will, and so that they may believe that I am with thee, and so that those who do not, and so that those who do not believe in God and deny 
and reject his religion and his book and his holy messenger, Muhammad the chosen one. The chosen one may be confronted with clear signs and a way of the guilty ones may become manifest. manifest, manifest Manifest. Rejoice, therefore, that a handsome and a proud boy will be bestowed upon thee. Thou will receive bright youth who will be of thy seed and who will be of thy prodigy. A handsome and a proud boy will come as your guest. His name is Bala and Bashir. It has been invested in, in his Holy Spirit, and it will be free from all impurity. He is the light of Allah. Blessed, blessed is he who comes from heaven. He shall accomplish by great he shall accomplish by grace which shall arrive with him. He will be characterized by gender, greatness and wealth. He will come into the world and will heal many other disorders. Through his messianic qualities and through his blessings of the Holy Spirit. It is he, it is the word of Allah and for Allah's mercy and honor. I equipped him with the words, with the word of majesty, who will be extremely intelligent and understand and will be meek of the heart. And he will be he will be filled with secular and spiritual knowledge. He will be convert he will convert thee into he will convert thee into four of this its meaning is not clear. <coughs> It is Monday, a blessed Monday, sun delight of the heart, high ranking noble, manifestation of the first and the last, manifestation of the truth and the high. As Allah has descended upon, descended from heaven, his advance will be greatly blessed and will be a source of manifestation of his, of his majesty. Behold, A light comes, a light anointed by God, and with perfume of his pleasure, we, we will pour out the Spirit into him, and he will be shown under the shadow of God. We will grow rapidly in secular, we will be meaning of procuring the, rest, the release of these ought of these hell. In a bomb, in bondage. The sign will spread to the ends of the earth, and people will be blessed through him. It will be the rise of the spirit of the stations of heaven. This is a matter of decree. Jazakallah. Next, we have a speech titled Claimant of the Prophecy by Rugar Malikzad.
that is referred to in the Jamaat as prophecy of Muslim mouth. According to the prophecy, Allah the Exalted will bestow him a son in the next nine years who would bring awesome progress in Islam and India. The promised reformer would spread the message of Islam to the farthest, to the farthest corners of the, of the earth. A part of the grand prophecy reads as follows. And I quote, I conquered upon thy a sign of my mercy according to your supplication. I have heard thy entreaties and have honored thy prayers with my acceptance through my mercy and have blessed thy journey. A sign of power, mercy nearness, mercy nearest to me is bestowed upon thy. A sign of grace and beneficence is awarded to thy and thou art granted the key of success and victory. He will be accompanied by grace which shall arrive in him. He will be characterized with the grandeur, greatness and wealth. He will come into the world and will heal many of their disorders through the messianic qualities, qualities and through the blessings of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> He is the word of Allah. Allah's mercy and honor has equipped him with the word of majesty. He will be extremely intelligent and understanding and will be meek of heart and will be filled with the secular and spiritual knowledge. Behold a light comet, a light anointed by the God with the, with the perfume of his pleasure. We all we shall pour our spirit into him and then he will be sheltered under the shadow of God. He will grow rapidly in the status and will be means of procuring the stress, the release of those held in bondage. His fame will spread to the ends of the earth and people will be blessed through him. He will then be raised to the spiritual station of heaven. This is the matter of decree, unquote. <coughs> As foretold by prophecy, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Ahmad was born within the prescribed period of nine years. On, on January 2, 1889, Prophet Salaam announced his uh, treaties with Siraj Munir that the promised son whose advent had been foretold to him had been born. Subsequently, during the Caliphate of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II, it became quite apparent that the prophecies were fulfilled in his person. The characteristics explained in the revealed words of the prophecy regarding the illustrious son was evident in this, per in this person, thus fulfilling the prophecy with grandeur. Praise the Lord. In 1944, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II declared that he was indeed the promised son whose birth was foretold by God Almighty to Hazrat Ahmad. May Allah enable us to follow all the good teachings of Ahmadiyyat and Islam. Amen. Uh, next we'll have a speech titled Initiative of Hazrat Muslim for the USA 1920 by Abdul Salam Bakhiza.
this speech, I had to do research into the 1920s mission to the United States. Oh, wait, say that out? Better? Worse? Good? Okay, good. All right, so next slide. Song of the West, next slide. So does anyone, let's go back one actually, let's, let's keep this one hidden for now. Okay, does anyone know when the preparation began for the mission to the United States? They want to know when the mission occurred in the United States. What year? 1920. Yeah, 1920. You know, it's like a centenary analysis. Simple math, 1920. So, the mission preparation began 10 years. Actually, I think nine years before, but the uh, actual dispatch happened in 1919. It took a few months to take the boat over. So, 19, 19 he departed. Uh, he on and he arrived in the United States in 1920. Now, Find information about this mission. Uh, do you know of any books that we can easily research? Anybody? For those 10 years? Anybody? It's very difficult because they don't exist. <laughs> so this topic, in order to understand this topic, the way you have to look at it is one, the era, two, the literature that was distributed in that era. So does anyone know when Mufti Muhammad Sadiq came to the United States, what was the name of the publication that was released? Muslim Sunrise. Perfect. And why is that name important? The prophecy of the latter day of Islam will rise in the West. So that, stuff, that publication is one of the best primary sources someone can use about the mission itself and the activities of the mission and also the purpose of the mission too. Is my time up? No? <laughs> okay. So what that means is that over time, in order to analyze this mission, we have to analyze two things. One, those who were part of this mission's publications, and two, the publications of Muslim of himself. So, next slide. So let's look at the mission itself. This preparation required a good bit of time in order to do. Now, Mufti Muhammad Sadiq was very successful because he used a very specific method of disseminating information. First thing he did when he came here, he wrote his specific personalities, and he wrote to them in very specific time periods. So he chose his time to write to these personalities, and he chose his personalities to write to because he knew if he matched time with the person, he would get notoriety. Now, can anyone tell me, 2,800 letters, how many letters is that per week? What's, what's 2,500 divided by 50? It's a spoiler right there. Huh? 400. It's 50. It's 50 per week. 50 per week. So, a young child. You guys right here, sitting right here. What? What does it take to write a letter? Now, you gotta use stamps. How many people still use stamps? And you send an email, right? You type it up. Oh, they need to use stamps. But back then, what did it take to write a letter? Ink, paper, stamps. In the 1920s, did we have ubiquitous electricity? Nope. It was still almost like Victorian era America. It's weird in the sense that the change that happened in those 10 years. You had to go write your letter, go to the post office, and deposit it. And on top of that, 50 letters per week, how many lectures would you do in the first year? It's up there. <laughs> 50. So you wrote to specific personalities, and how many letters did you get back from these people? 600. And he did 50 lectures in the first year. So he wrote to people, he made his name known. Once they knew who he was, he would announce that he's coming to this location. He would organize with people at that location to do a lecture. He would do a lecture, and then he would spread his notoriety. Say if you did not have the money or the time to go listen to his lectures, what would he do then? Talk about in the beginning. Come on. Muslims, see, he got it. <laughs> he got it. Muslim Sunrise. Because not everyone has the time or the money or the uh, ability to travel to listen to these lectures, nor can he write to everybody in the United States, but he provided a publication for people to do so. Now, was this out of incident or was this a planned approach? Planned approach. How many years planning? Uh, Approximately. Yeah, there you go, he got it. There you go, 1911. That's when the Jamaats were in the plans to do this. So they had a plan written out. And they, so first, 
write the letters, using momentum for their speeches, periodical. And you taught the masses about Islam. Next slide. Now, what do you think you wrote about? Sorry, Has anyone read the early editions of Muslim Sunrise? First edition, 1921. Is that him answering or is that him talking to someone? <laughs> okay, so uh, the early editions, he didn't just talk about the Quran, nor did he just talk about Hadith, he talked about everything he could possibly talk about. He addressed people, he addressed situations, he addressed social ills. What was one of the biggest social ills, two biggest social ills in 1920? Can anyone tell me? Somebody wasn't born here. Come on. Define your entire generation, that's the reason why we have mosques here. Come on. Okay, what was the question? People from a long time ago. Like, all these people tell me. So I thought I right. It was basically racism at the time. Yeah. The segregation. The segregation. The segregation. Yeah. It, was a big, it was a big deal. Yeah. Because it was the first time somebody can imagine. It's 1920. Does anyone know when segregation was legally ended? Not on there. Legally, yeah, legally in a sense. Segregation. Oh, thank you. 1948. This is 28 years prior to it ending. He can't, and he said words that people had never heard before. Can someone read that thought portion? Go ahead. Huh? 
Yeah, it looks like that. And then we have dissemination of media. Television, movies became ubiquitous. Flight became ubiquitous. It was, it was in its prototype stages before, but now we're really getting into it. Of course, after World War I, World War II is the, the Air Force was developing at this time. What about this? Electricity. How many people had electricity in the beginning of the 1920s? Go ahead. Yes, super rich people. And then in the end, it was most of the country. Next slide. Let's talk about the Arab Awakening. What happened in World War I that we didn't see in World War II? Does anyone know? We had people coming back that had entire life-changing situations. Having your legs and arms blown off is one thing, but people came back with mustard gas damage to their faces, to their bodies, that they had to walk around with masks on because of how protest their, their deprivations were. And so many people died in resulting in the war that you see portraits like this where the child, you know, by the time he grows up, he's fighting in World War II. And the father, he's missing, they just have an empty coat. That's how many people were missing at the time because of this war. And does anyone know what the perception of war was before World War I? People thought it was like a cakewalk. You just go, you do war, you come back, and you're, you know, it's like summer vacation. But the first time they actually ever said mechanized infantry to fight. The people of the United States, this is the first actual great battle that they had after the Civil War. In terms of the comparison, people had no idea how to fathom the comparison and the, the way it would affect society. And then you have on top of this, you have people who are, at this time see this technology progressing, but they don't understand why do we still have segregation? Why do we still have the inability for women to vote? It doesn't make any sense. So can anyone tell me, go next. <coughs> <coughs> What's between mimetic and genetic memory? Can anyone tell me? If you're a horse and your legs don't work, are you going to be a very good horse? No. If you're a tree and your branches are brittle and they snap in the wind, are you a good tree? No. However, the same thing works for information. When a society develops and it gets large and it gets complex, the only thing that can allow the society to remain strong is a proper foundation of information. The Quran talks about this. And actually, Muslim himself wrote in Real Revolution his interpretation of how to do the belief and the triumph of the belief. Let's go to the next, uh, this is the last slide. So does anyone know what Surah 48 is? You know? Go ahead. There you go. Does anyone know what that means? Victory. Victory! And this is the last verse. So this tells you, in the end, the purpose of Islam. Can someone, uh, no, actually no, I'll do it. <laughs> and the description of the gospel, this is talking about the people of God. So, is like unto a seed that produces and sends forth its sprout, then makes it strong, then it becomes thick and stands firm on its stem, delighting the sower, those who planted the seed, that he may cause the disbelievers to burn with rage at the sight of them. Allah has promised unto those them who believe and do good works, forgiveness and a great reward. So the stages that are mentioned in the Book of Revolution allude to the plan in which we had for the West. Seed sown into the hearts. The first person to come sows that seed into the hearts, germinating in their tender plan. You hear the message of Islam. Your entire life experiences leave you with something empty. The war, segregation, whatever it is, leaves you empty, and right now you're willing to hear something. And at that point in time, when you hear something, you want to know more about it, and that tender plant becomes strong. And you personally take action. The next step, the plant gains a thick trunk. This movement spreads and forms a stable foundation into the population. And then the last, direct quote, the Islamic civilization to be established through Ahmadiyya would be so grand and glorious that it would make other nations open their eyes and wonder saying that there was indeed a goodly crop. So the goal of this movement in the United States was to establish that tender plant, to sow the seeds of Islam in the hearts of people. And over time, to bring us to the last portion as, a, as an entire planet, not as one nation, but as a people. All right, I think that's good enough. I, time's up.
guess, but he still wants to be talked to. Uh, next, we'll have a main address by uh, Murabi Devasad. Um, just a quick announcement in the meantime. Uh, there's going to be a Khudam meeting during lunch after Namaz, so grab your food and come to the Khudam room for the meeting. Jazakallah. Uh, Use the bathroom before, because it's going to be a long meeting.
the door. Uh, yes, sir. Small gift for the for all the Asman. Can you please come right up here? And they can get a chocolate today for their participation in the program. So first they would all come. On their part, they can come line up here. Yes, you can start. Next.
you again available. So you can pass it on to your uh, your children and 100 years from now when they will be celebrating the second centennial, they will remember that you were there and this was the thing that you have saved for them. So this is this has special uh, significance and cherish this moment that you have and try to come to all the other programs, centennial program that inshallah Jawad has planned for this year. Uh, every every uh, event in this year is going to be centennial event. In addition to the Jamaat programs that we have, Young Muslim Out, Young Muslim Out, Khilafat Day and all that, also the national holidays, um, the Memorial Day or the Labor Day or the 4th of July, Jamaat is going to participate in it and celebrate it with the spirit of the centennial uh, blessing that we have. The third point I would like to uh, make to you is that, and I don't want to put too much on it, but I thought it would be important to point out that I heard some little bit of uh, rumors and gossiping and uh, discussion going on about the program that we had last night. I had a program yesterday here in the Masjid. Some of you over here participated in it. And uh, I think we should appreciate the tremendous effort that went into it in uh, planning and organizing. This was done by the um, our African American brothers and sisters. The uh, organization was established by Hazur Ayyub Tala Bin Aziz to promote the cause of uh, African, uh, basically pan, it's a pan-African uh, movement or uh, group to uh, highlight, discuss the issues that they face and how uh, Ahmadiyyat and Islam can contribute to their progress and prosperity. So this program was put together by them, a lot of uh, non ahmadis were also invited in it. So uh, we should appreciate the effort that went into it and the thought that went to it. There might have been some lapses, something that you can find uh, questionable and you may have exception, uh, take exception with, uh, but that is not the intent or the purpose. The people who organized it did it with sincerity and I, I believe that they did it with sincerity, so if there were some lapses, uh, I am sure that they understand that they, that they could have avoided it if they had taken some due precautions. But still, it was not such egregious things that we could uh, just brush aside their effort and their positivity that the impact we want to have in the society. So pray for them and in the future also, when they have programs, uh, it's our Jamaat program, that's one point I want to highlight. It's not their program. It is our <coughs> program. It's a Jamaat organization uh, uh, set up within the Jamaat. And we should all participate in it and offer our help and advice and guidance uh, so that we can absorb the newcomers so that they can also understand uh, what Islam and Ahmadiyya is all about, what are our values, what are the principles that you want to uphold, maintaining the cultural integrity, that's a separate issue, maintaining the cultural identity, but still there are certain fundamental principles that Islam and Ahmadiyya stands for and we can help uh, promote them as well. So with that, I would discourage uh, two things. Zani, the thinking evil out of intentions or uh, casting aspersions on the intentions of people who are doing it uh, and or second Rivak that is talking behind the back. If there are issues, if you find something uh, objectionable, certainly you have the right, you have the uh, you know the pain for the Jamaat and you hold the uh, value and the uh, prestige of the Jamaat close to your heart uh, and we understand that and, and bring it to the attention of the organizers, bring it to the attention of the Jamaat administration. Uh, Murabi Sahib is here, myself is here, Naib the General Secretary, and we can discuss it and we can try to sort it out. Instead of uh, uh, blowing it out of proportion or talking too much about it, which leads you to sinful path, which is Badzani and Ghibat, those are the two things that are forbidden. In the Holy Quran, specifically, Allah Ta'ala has identified those weaknesses that human nature uh, has, and we find it very easy to slip into it, uh, sometimes unintentionally and unknowingly. So I just want to caution you and uh, remember of all of us in our prayers that may Allah make us better Muslims, better Ahmadis, and live up to the standard
that Khalifa Abdul Masih expects us and he expects us on the basis of what Hazrat Masimah said. And what Hazrat Masimah said is what the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet said. So it's a very high lofty standard that we all have to work towards. Nobody's perfect. We need to work every day on, on our personal reformation and the improvement of the brothers and sisters that we have around us. Because we grow together. If we do not grow together, we will not grow, believe me. We have to grow together as a community. That was the purpose of Masim Al-Salaam al said that all the pious souls should get together and they should then form a strong bond among them and then they can influence the society around them. So it is, we are all in it together. Remember that, may Allah enable us to, uh, to, to live those uh, higher values uh, and uh, aspirations that we have. Uh, so now we'll close the meeting with the silent prayer, please. So would you please join me in that?